Hi, I'm Lakeland Hogan with Home Instead. Each and every day, we're in the homes of individuals living with Alzheimer's and other dementias and supporting them and their families. So we see the firsthand impact of this disease. And we want to thank Us Against Alzheimer's for all that you do in research, advocacy, and awareness. And congrats on 10 years. You have made such an impact and what an important milestone this is. We also want to congratulate tonight's honorees. Uh, all the work you have done is also so impactful as we join together in this fight against Alzheimer's disease because we know it's going to take all of us. So I hope that you will join us. Hi, I'm Mike King with Volunteers of America and we really want to congratulate, congratulate us against Alzheimer's for a 10 year birthday, 10 year anniversary had some incredible impact, just incredible impact on lifting the dialogue about Alzheimer's and specifically lifting the dialogue about expanding the number of dollars going into Alzheimer's research so we can cure this dreaded disease. Uh, we are thrilled with the progress that's been made. At the same time, we know we will never rest well at night until we've found that cure. So we celebrate this with all of you and celebrate the awardees, the awardees that are going to be recognized tonight. All of you have been a major part of keeping this dialogue going and taking action, taking action on behalf of those suffering with Alzheimer's and their families. Thank you for what you've done. Volunteers of America is proud to be a part of this. We literally touch over a thousand people every day with Alzheimer's, serving them within our facilities and institutions. We are ready to stand by you. We are ready to keep this going. And we're ready to be at a place where maybe we don't have to do these anymore. When we have found the cure, we have removed the need for more services. We have done what needs to be done. We are gonna be in this for the long haul. So thank you, George Radenberg, for everything you've given us. You are the shepherd of this movement. Congratulations. Each year, the Global Alzheimer's Platform Foundation recognizes the citizen scientists, everyday people who volunteer countless hours along with their body and brain to help scientists change the Alzheimer's trajectory. The Champion Award recognizes individuals who have been strong advocates for trial participation in their community so full of heart and so full of determination to make a difference, not only for herself, but for her children and future generations. The Cornerstone Award recognizes individuals who have made extraordinary efforts to participate in a trial. With a history of Alzheimer's disease in his family and a strong desire to help others, Dr. Lewis has participated in three clinical trials the Collaborator Award recognizes a study partner who consistently supports a clinical trial participant and who promotes Alzheimer's clinical research involvement. Matt is an extremely uh, busy person, uh, being a firefighter as well as a Florida state representative going back and forth from Tallahassee. Uh, without his commitment and participation to the clinical trial that his mom is in, it would have, of course, been impossible to have her uh, in the trial. The Catalyst Award recognizes individuals who've been a stimulus for innovative approaches to encourage trial participation. When Dennis Chan's wife, Angie, started displaying dementia symptoms, they contacted their local Alzheimer's Association chapter in Boston and found out about enrolling in clinical trials. There is more to the stories of each of these incredible volunteers. We can't wait for you to get to know them better at our national celebration in February. I would like to thank the Bradenburg Foundation and George Bradenburg and his family for their enormous generosity in supporting the Citizen Scientist Award. If there was no Alzheimer's, I wouldn't have had to watch my grandmother go through the struggle she did with this horrible disease when I was 13 and watch what it put my family through at that time. I like to say with my mom, she's still with us, and my dad at the helm, it sucks to be Alzheimer's, because they are gonna take this thing down. And I cannot wait until the day that we can say they did it. They helped cure Alzheimer's.
please join us. If there were no more Alzheimer's, there would be far less memories lost, uh, less heartache, and families would not be faced with all the challenges that they're currently facing. I'm fighting for better treatment for those impacted by the disease today and a cure so that we have hope for the future. If there was no Alzheimer's, we would never have to worry about forgetting the sweet memories we created with our loved ones. I am fighting for all the caregivers across the nation who are working tirelessly around the clock to take care of their loved ones while also balancing their health. Join us. If there was no Alzheimer's, my grandmother and her family would have lived the last 11 years with better quality of life. I'm fighting for health and I'm fighting for justice for all of us. Join us. If there were no Alzheimer's, that would be an answer to my prayers. I'm fighting for people like myself who are living with Alzheimer's or a related dementia. And I invite you to join us. If there were no Alzheimer's in the world, the world would be a much better place. I'm fighting to bring greater awareness to what is becoming a global epidemic. Join us in the fight against Alzheimer's. If there was no Alzheimer's, my mom would have enjoyed the retirement she dreamed of and worked so hard for. I fight for all the families who are touched by this disease, all those living with Alzheimer's and those who love and care for them. I care about dementia because more than 5 million Americans are living with the disease and I'm fighting in memory of my mother, Mae Carter Danzi. Join us. If there was no Alzheimer's, this would be such a great world. I am fighting for all, so no one else must live this dreadful disease. So will you join us? Because my dream is to end Alzheimer's. If there was no Alzheimer's, there would be millions of people who would still be able to hug their mom, their dad, their grandma, their grandpa, and I'm fighting for those people so that they can continue hugging them. Join us. If there were no Alzheimer's disease, I might be together with the best man I've ever known tonight having dinner. That's my father, Lester Potts, who died of Alzheimer's disease. Tonight, we're fighting for a care and a cure in memory of the eight family members for whom we and our immediate families cared who either had Alzheimer's disease or vascular dementia. Will you join us? If there was no Alzheimer's, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. Our children were graduating from high school, college, and getting married. And Jean and I were looking forward to our grandchildren and growing older together. I'm fighting for a cure. There was a reason why God took us through this journey. Join us. If there were no Alzheimer's, I would still be working, functioning, feeling like I have a purpose. I'm fighting for the possibility to spread happiness despite having this disease. Join us. If there was no Alzheimer's, we could all share our past memories and throw it back to the good old times. I am fighting for my grandma, Harmony, and everyone who has been affected by Alzheimer's. Join us. If there were no Alzheimer's, I would be ecstatic. I would be metastatic. We are fighting for every family who's impacted by this cruel disease. The people that we lost and the generations yet to come. Please join us. I care about brain health because I believe in AARP's mission to empower people to age how they please and to make healthy decisions for their brain health. I hope you'll join us. Being advocates for Alzheimer's and meeting wonderful people across the country have been really inspiring for both of us and a truly rewarding phase of our lives. If there was no Alzheimer's, I wouldn't have to worry about my loved ones losing their memories. I am fighting for a future we can all remember. Join us. I care about dementia because I have seen firsthand how it can slowly and painfully steal your loved one from you. I'm fighting in memory of my father, Vic Coda, who we lost this past July to dementia, and I want to help ensure that other people do not feel this kind of pain. Join us. And I'm fighting for a cure in honor of my dad, who died of AD three years ago. Join us. I'm fighting for a world without Alzheimer's for all communities, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, or zip code. Join us. If there was no Alzheimer's, we would be ecstatic. We're fighting Alzheimer's for our friends and family and for my patients. Join us. If there were no Alzheimer's, the world would be void of millions of lives disrupted by heartbreak. But there would not be the opportunity to learn radical friendship that we all need. 
I'm fighting for faith communities to understand that through dementia trained volunteers, we can come alongside people living with Alzheimer's and dementia and we can help them reclaim purpose, meaning, and growth. Join us. If there were no Alzheimer's, we wouldn't have to choose between caring for our loved ones and pursuing our career ambitions. I am fighting for my grandparents who I have cared for and for all other millennials and Gen Zs who will disproportionately bear the burden of Alzheimer's. Join us. And if Alzheimer's no longer existed, well, first I know my mom in heaven would be extremely happy. You see, she lived with Alzheimer's for 30 years. As for me and my company, Alzheimer Speaks, we would proudly and happily be out of a job. Let's end Alzheimer's. If there were no Alzheimer's, we would be able to remember our loved ones and share more memories together. I'm fighting for those who have been caregivers and gone through the painful memories of the disease. Please join us in this fight. I care about dementia because I've lost several loved ones to Alzheimer's. I'm currently worried about brain health because both of my parents are socially isolated due to staying at home during this pandemic. I'm fighting on behalf of all people affected by dementia. Join us. If there was no Alzheimer's, I would be overjoyed at the fact that we could all remember our lifetime memories and all of our loved ones. I'm fighting for two clients that I took care of when I was a professional caregiver. It was they who brought the reality of Alzheimer's to my world, and they're the reason why I'm inspired to be an advocate and a leader in this space. Join us. I care about dementia because my beautiful, intelligent mother uh, suffers from dementia, and I'm going to continue to fight in her honor. Won't you join us? If there was no Alzheimer's, it would suggest to me that we've been able to conquer a neurodegenerative disease. And it means that future neurodegenerative diseases can also be uh, treated and prevented. I'm fighting for families and uh, friends to be able to continue to share their memories uh, as they get older throughout their lifespan. Join us. If there was no Alzheimer's, we wouldn't have to worry about losing our loved ones to such a disease where they slowly forget us. I'm fighting for the value of those memories and keeping our loved ones close to us. Join us. If there was no Alzheimer's, women like me could do more than spend decades of our lives caregiving. I'm fighting for my mom, my dad, my father-in-law, who all died with dementia. Join us. I care about dementia because I know how hard it is on families. I fight in memory of my mother and father and in honor of all those people who made my parents struggle with dementia just a little bit easier. We are working to reduce risks to brain health and to improve care for people living with dementia now. Join us. If there was no Alzheimer's, then those affected would have the freedom they deserve. I'm fighting for youth to get involved with advocating for policies to help make that a reality. If there was no Alzheimer's disease, I could plan for my golden years without fear of losing myself and worry about the hurt and suffering this disease may cause my family. I'm fighting for the right to have my body not outlive my mind. I care about dementia because it's an insidious disease that robs people of their memory, their vitality, and eventually their life. I would like to help researchers find a cure for dementia. I'm helping to eradicate dementia in honor and memory of my sweet mother. I want to stomp out dementia. And so does AARP. Please join us. Studies suggest that Latinos in the U.S. are 1.5 times more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease than white non-Latinos. If there was no Alzheimer's, our abuelitos would live a better quality of life. They are whom I'm fighting for. Join me. If there was no Alzheimer's, then millions of families would be able to spend time with their loved ones and create beautiful new memories. I'm fighting for a better future for Alzheimer's patients and families, and a future with a cure. If there was no Alzheimer's, I'd be able to get all this great wisdom and tips and advice from my great-grandmother as I navigate through grad schools and all the struggles that come with that. I'm fighting for her and for every other student that is missing out on those conversations. Join us. I'm here because I know it's possible for people with dementia to still live well. You don't have to feel alone and you don't have to feel powerless. Join us. 
If there was no Alzheimer's, I would have more time to spend with my family and friends to do things that I enjoy. I fight for my 87-year-old cousin. So I invite you to join us as we do everything we can to try to find a cure for Alzheimer's. If there was no Alzheimer's, I would still have my grandma Mary. I'm fighting for a world where no one has to lose a loved one to Alzheimer's. Join us. If there's no Alzheimer's, then millions of people will be able to live their lives to the fullest like they used to. I'm fighting for my grandmother. Join us. If there was no Alzheimer's, then my grandparents would probably live longer, happier lives than they are projected to right now. And along the way, I'd be able to share more memories with them. That's why I'm here fighting, not only for the future of my family, but for the future of the rest of the Alzheimer's community. So please, join us. If there was no Alzheimer's, no frontotemporal dementia, no Lewy body dementia, or any form of dementia, millions of people would live longer, happier lives. I'm fighting for the incredible people with dementia and care partners whom I've had the absolute honor and pleasure of getting to know and work with over the last nine years. Join us. If there was no Alzheimer's, no one would have to be afraid of losing who they are. I am fighting for my grandfather who suffered from dementia, but also for the almost 6 million people suffering from the disease in the U.S. and the over 15 million unpaid family caregivers. Join us, because together we can create a future worth remembering. If there was no Alzheimer's disease, millions of families would be saved from the huge financial and emotional price tag of this illness. I am fighting for the over 84,000 families right here in Orange County, California. If there were no Alzheimer's, my father would still be alive today. I am fighting for more resources and actions from Congress to find a cure for Alzheimer's. Join us in our fight to educate Nuestra Comunidad on the impact of Alzheimer's on communities of color and women. Thank you. If there's no Alzheimer's, that means we finally achieved our human healthcare mission of eradicating this devastating disease. I'm fighting for a better world in which everyone and their loved ones can spend many more precious moments together. Join us. I care about dementia because both of my parents, my mom and dad, suffered this horrible and debil debilitating illness. So I am fighting in memory of my parents. If there were no Alzheimer's, there would be so much less suffering. I'm fighting for my kids. Join us. I care about dementia because my father died in 2002 of Pick's disease, which is a form of dementia. He died much too soon at 67. I'm fighting in memory of him and for all the caretakers because I watched my mother just about kill herself taking care of him. Join us. If there was a world without Alzheimer's, my grandma would still be with us today. I'm fighting for Alzheimer's, for not only the patients and caregivers across the country that are dealing with this disease right now, but the millions that are affected through the rising costs that this disease puts on our healthcare system as a whole. Join us. My father demonstrated signs of dementia in his early 60s, forgetting where he placed things, and lost his ability to drive. Many years later, we took over the care of my husband's aunt, an incredibly accomplished woman who came down with Alzheimer's. I am fighting for both of these wonderful people who blessed my life and were taken away from me much too early. Join us. Our family's been deeply affected by this disease. I am 100% committed, both as a CEO of Connected Living, as we passionately try to make things better for caregivers and families and communities. I am one of USA2's biggest supporters. I'm 100% in. I care about brain health because my mom struggled for many years with dementia before passing away just a few days ago. I am reading, learning, talking, trying, and giving and fighting in loving memory of the beautiful person that my mother was. Please join us. Hi, my name is Maddie. And I'm Colin. And we just lost our grandma to Alzheimer's this year. This would be the second grandma we've lost to Alzheimer's. This is why we're fighting to end Alzheimer's so people don't have to lose their moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas to Alzheimer's. Please join us. I care about those who have dementia, like my husband who's with me here. 
I'm also fighting as an advocate to be sure that we have the right care and the right facilities and the right medications and everything we can do as far as research for those who have dementia. Join us. I care about brain health because I believe to my core that most of us have more control than we can imagine, not just delaying the onset of dementia and the progression of dementia, but also in optimizing the here and now, the purposes of happiness and life fulfillment. And it's so imperative that we take control and we do so now. So please join us. As the daughter and family caregiver of someone living with frontal temporal dementia, this issue is personal. We are fighting for my mom and all those who live with this disease. We need more research. We need more resources and tools to support people living with all forms of dementia and their family caregivers. Join us together. Three generations of my family over 40 years, I'm fighting against this disease for my kids and my grandkids. Join us. My late wife, uh, Trish, and I formed Us Against Alzheimer's in 2010 because we were frustrated and angry at the lack of peace and energy and passion in the Alzheimer's movement. Her grandmother had died of this disease. Her mother had died of this disease. We were joined by a small group of friends who themselves had experienced Alzheimer's in their families. We collaborate with researchers, with corporations, uh, with other non-governmental organizations and nonprofits, uh, because we want everybody to win. My mother was diagnosed and I became uh, very well acquainted with the disease. We began by bringing together those most affected, including women, because women are two-thirds of the patients and two-thirds of the caregivers. We brought together grassroots supporters and influential women and convened conversations to build momentum. We formed partnerships with world-class organizations, companies, institutions, and thought leaders to create awareness and quickly become one of the first women's Alzheimer's movements called Women Against Alzheimer's. From the start, we focused on inequities in brain health because black Americans are twice as likely as whites to develop Alzheimer's. We established African Americans against Alzheimer's to promote brain health, research equity, and healthy aging among the black community. We built the first ever coalition of community-based organizations coordinating Alzheimer's awareness and brain health promotion efforts in the Latino community. Latinos Against Alzheimer's mobilizes researchers, advocates, and community leaders to take action on brain health disparities impacting millions of Latino families. We have all lived the Alzheimer's journey. We know its pain points, um, the details of the challenges and how the disease confounds every patient, every caregiver, and their families. We've also navigated the stark reality that no matter what we do or what we did at home or it, with a loved one in a facility, the disease always wins. We started the Global Alzheimer's Platform to address the cost, duration, and frankly, the inefficiency of Alzheimer's clinical trials. With industry, clinical trial participant, and philanthropic support, we created a network in North America of more than 80 research sites to speed the delivery of innovative therapies to those afflicted with Alzheimer's. We have increased the amount of research investment annually at NIH from $440 million a year to over $2.8 billion a year. We have a clinical trial network so that is speeding clinical innovations to market. And we're going to have three drugs on market next year for the first time since 2004. Our team is working harder than ever for the millions of Americans who are suffering from Alzheimer's, and indeed for those that have experienced COVID in their families and Alzheimer's as well. Because of them, thanks to you, there's hope on the horizon. Join us. Come join us. Join us. Join us. 
Join us. Join us. Good evening and welcome to the seventh annual Trish Freidenberg Gala. I am George Freidenberg, a chairman and co-founder of Us Against Alzheimer's. We, and by we, I mean my dog, kiddo, and myself, uh, are joining you live from my home in Washington, DC. And there are close to a thousand of you around the country who are seeing this. Trish and I love to entertain here. It's a home built for friends, for dogs, uh, for collaborators, and for champions in the cause. So excuse me, kiddo, I'm gonna talk to you later. <laughs> Uh, from Boston to Los Angeles to Atlanta, San Francisco to Chicago, and many places in between, there are hundreds of you, new friends and old, watching tonight. Welcome. This has been an incredibly difficult year with COVID affecting virtually everyone in the country, but especially for the Alzheimer's community. Tonight's program is meant to be inspiring, hopeful, and even a little fun, even as we experience COVID in our community. So get comfortable, grab a drink or a bite to eat and stay with us until the end. You will not want to miss a thing and you will not want to miss the ending of this evening. We created this organization to stop Alzheimer's. We do that through the power of us. We attack the problem from every angle, with every voice. We run to the problems, we don't shy away from them. That includes those suffering from the disease and the caregiving community, but it also includes researchers, companies, civic leaders, advocates, all of whom we work with every single day to find the cure. What you'll experience tonight is a sample of the collective power that allows us to create change despite being a small organization. We fight way above our weight class. To borrow the show title we'll see later on tonight, this is us. There's been a lot of progress over the last 10 years, but despite the challenges that 2020 has delivered through COVID, there is hope on the horizon, the near-term horizon uh, for Alzheimer's. Next year, there'll be potentially three new drugs on the market. There's record investment in Alzheimer's research. We've been invited to and are now partnering with the World Economic Forum to build a global research infrastructure that can reach global populations in low and in middle income countries. We have created a global clinical trial support network in North America called the Global Alzheimer's Platform that is in fact opening operations uh, in Europe the first quarter of next year. We are hyper-focused on promoting prevention and brain health because we are now told by researchers that 30 to 40% of Alzheimer's is preventable by taking risk reduction steps in our midlife to protect our brains in later life. We're breaking down racial disparities through our new Center for Brain Health Equity with the CDC. And we're amplifying the voice of those with dementia and their caregivers and working to help identify what matters most to them and delivering what matters most to them to industry and to regulators. Change is happening progress is palpable, and that is why we cannot stop now. We need to put our pedal to the metal and take this momentum and drive it into the coming decade. Throughout the evening, if you're moved by what you hear and the work we are doing, we welcome your financial support. We can't do it without you. You'll see on your screen, you can make a tax deductible donation through text to give by texting the word powerful space, your donation amount, space, and your name to the number 56512. Our goal is to raise $100,000 tonight through text to give And because I personally cover the overhead costs of this organization, 100% of your donation will support our work and your work to end Alzheimer's. Before we move into the program, I want to share with you a quick behind the scenes look at what it takes to put a live virtual gala together. What you're seeing now is just one small part 
of the team that's actually spread around the country, making tonight possible. I'm so proud of the entire Us Against Alzheimer's team. To them, I say thank you for quickly adapting to this incredibly challenging year, for keeping your focus on the work to stop Alzheimer's uh, and to produce this first of a kind live virtual gala for us. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce my friend and founding board member and partner in this effort, Jill Lesser. Hello. It's so weird to come to the stage tonight and not uh, give George a big hug, but such is the world in COVID. So thank you, George, for everything you do and for hosting us here tonight. A big part of us is women. We are two thirds of the patients and 63% of the unpaid caregivers. The Be Brain Powerful campaign empowers women to care for their brains and encourages women to use their voices to advocate for change in the Alzheimer's fight. We are beyond grateful to have actress, singer, advocate Mandy Moore as a new national ambassador of this campaign and cannot wait to hear from her soon tonight. We are also thrilled to have a beloved former first lady as the honorary chair of this important campaign. Mrs. Laura Bush has been with us since the beginning and we are so pleased to have her here with us again. Please join me in welcoming Mrs. Bush. Good evening and welcome to Us Against Alzheimer's annual Trish Vandenberg Gala. As honorary chair of the Be Brain Powerful campaign, I'm happy to join you for this special virtual event. The campaign team is thrilled that Mandy Moore will now lead Be Brain Powerful as our national ambassador. And I'm grateful that she's committed to raising awareness for the importance of women's brain health. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken a toll on those affected by Alzheimer's. It's caused undue stress and isolation for people living with memory loss and for their caregivers. But despite the challenges facing Alzheimer's patients, there is reason for hope. Viable treatment options are now on the horizon and funding for Alzheimer's research is at an all-time high. New studies show that by caring for our minds and bodies and our mental and emotional health, by eating well, sleeping, and exercising, we can take an active role in delaying or preventing dementia. The generosity of loyal us against Alzheimer's supporters like you make advances and progress possible. Thank you for participating tonight and for celebrating Us Against Alzheimer's 10th anniversary from the comfort of your own living room. Thank you so much, Mrs. Bush, for your support. I also want to recognize my partner in crime and Gaelic co-chair for this event, Marilyn Glosserman, who cannot be with us in person tonight, but who I know is watching. Hello, Marilyn, and I hope you are feeling really brain healthy. There are six pillars of brain health that you can learn about on the campaign website at bebrainpowerful.org. My personal favorite is the relax and reduce stress. Not only are we going to attempt to do that together right now, I know we've had to do that a lot over the past year. So joining us now is Aaron Joseph, founder of the Kane Collective, a small business in Baltimore, Maryland. Aaron, welcome. Thank you, Jill. It's an honor to be here tonight supporting this important cause, a cause that has affected me personally and families across the world. I hope everyone's enjoying their berry cocktail today. Uh, I made two here for you. If you didn't get the recipe, you can find it on the website below. I made two for you. Here you go. Thank you, Joe Aaron. And George. Cheers, George. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. Uh, and George for this. I have already had one, so I feel it working on the relax part. We're all good. So while we enjoy our beverage, I want to thank those that make our work possible. And these are more than just donors. They're people and companies deeply invested in this fight and link arms with us to help create programs and initiatives with high impact. They are our true partners. Our, pre our premier sponsors, Acadia, 
ASI, Otsuka, and Biogen. Our platinum sponsors, Volunteers of America and Home Instead. And our gold. And silver level sponsors. And I do really also want to recognize tonight's co-chairs. We really couldn't do it without you. Our champion and advocate level donors. And most importantly, our host committee members who put their heart and soul in helping me and Marilyn bring this to life. If you want to join them in supporting us, don't forget to text. Your support is really powerful. And now I'd like to introduce one of our partners, Acadia. Acadia began working with us this year on our COVID survey work, helping us to understand what matters most to patients and caregivers. This is Bill Keller with Acadia Pharmaceuticals, and I just wanted to wish everyone a welcome to the gala this evening. Really wanted to recognize all the awardees for the Us Against Alzheimer's group, and also wanted to thank all of the advocates, no matter where you are. We at Acadia are striving every day to help those with dementia and some of the neuropsychiatric symptoms, and we look forward to supporting this organization and also seeing the advocates advocate for their loved ones in the community. Let's all have a great gala and thank you all very much from Acadia Pharmaceuticals. So you're a Republican and he's a Democrat. What? No, she's the Democrat. I'm the Republican. Oh my God, did you call me a Republican? <laughs> Ooh. Um, no. My role in life has been to cancel his vote. And this this guy is independent. He's an what? independent. He is. Yeah. Yes, yes. I know. <laughs> you know, in the height of passion, you don't really ask, by the way, what is your political party? So, but I assumed, you know, that once we got married, I could certainly get him to get rid of those ridiculous elephants and uh, I was wrong 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 but I have we have gotten to a really wonderful point and that is that we found our true role in life and that was to cure Alzheimer's or to stop Alzheimer's by 2020 and that has has cured our differences because now we're neither Republican nor Democrat we're the Alzheimer's party Trish and I were opposites politically, uh, but as she said, we came together to become the Alzheimer's Party. And thanks in part to our advocacy work, federal funding for Alzheimer's increased sixfold since our founding, now 2.8 billion a year. Over the years, we've become friends with our partners in Congress who share our commitment uh, to ending this disease. Tonight, we are honoring Senator Patty Murray a Democrat from the state of Washington, or as they say, the great state of Washington, for her bipartisan work on this issue and for being a co-sponsor of the HOPE Act. It's my pleasure actually to welcome the 2017 recipient of this award, Republican Senator Roy Blunt of the great state of Missouri, who will introduce Senator Murray. and the top Democrat on the Labor, Health and Human Services Appropriations Committee, uh, Senator Patty Murray. Uh, she's being honored this year as this year's congressional champion, uh, and she certainly has been a champion for medical research. Uh, on our committee working together, we've uh, worked in a bipartisan way. On the last five appropriations bills, we've increased funding for the National Institutes of Health uh, by almost $12 billion, or 40%, after a long period of time with no increase at all. Uh, medical research is the answer to many of our nation's health issues, uh, from COVID-19 to Alzheimer's. Uh, everyone listening tonight knows uh, the concerning statistics. Alzheimer's disease costs the U.S. taxpayer about $23 million every hour, uh, and one in three seniors dying with Alzheimer's or some other form of dementia. The only answer to curbing and stopping this disease is finding a treatment and cure through medical research, and Patty Murray understands that. 
Uh, she supported targeted funding increases for Alzheimer's Research, which has provided a $2.2 billion increase over the past five years. I think five years ago, we were at about $600 million. Now we're knocking on the door of $3 billion. Uh, it's more than quadruple the amount of funding uh, for Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, in addition to funds focused on Alzheimer's research, Patty and I have worked to increase uh, our investment in the BRAIN initiative. Uh, and of course, one of the goals of the BRAIN initiative is to map the human brain. Uh, since becoming the ranking member of the Labor HHS uh, Committee, our investment in brain the brain initiatives increased by $500 million a year. Um, and in addition to that, uh, as one of the lead negotiators of the 21st Century's Cures Bill, uh, she helped include another billion and a half over 10 years for that brain initiative. The brain initiative could be the game changer. You know, we don't know exactly we're going to we're going to find what we're looking for, uh, but certainly once we have a better understanding how the brain works, uh, we'll likely unlock the, uh, unlock the answers to numerous uh, neurological disorders, including Alzheimer's. And last year, our committee began funding for the BOLD Act. Uh, this new investment in the Center for Disease Control will establish a uniform national Alzheimer's infrastructure to increase early detection, to reduce risk, to prevent hospitalizations, and to support caregiving. And finally, uh, our bill includes critical support for direct services for caretaker programs. This is a, a challenge where people helping the person with the, the disease are often more dramatically impacted even than the person that has this terrible disease. I know that NIH and Alzheimer's research and other dementia support programs would not be where they are today without Senator Patty Murray. I appreciate her partnership on these issues in the Appropriations Committee, but more importantly, I appreciate her friendship in the Senate. I'm pleased to be part of the event to honor her as your 2020 Congressional Champion and want to congratulate her tonight on this award. Well, thank you so much to Senator Blunt for such a kind introduction. I'm so honored to receive this award from Us Against Alzheimer's and to join you all tonight at the annual Vredenburg Dinner. I've heard from many families about the devastating effect Alzheimer has on their lives, and each individual story is so heartbreaking. Alzheimer's patients are fighting to hold on to cherished memories with children, grandchildren, friends, and others, and a feeling of control over their daily lives. And Alzheimer's, as you know, doesn't just affect patients fighting the disease. It impacts the lives of family members and friends and caregivers. So I'll keep fighting in the Senate to build on the work that we have done to make sure Medicare and Medicaid cover Alzheimer's care planning services, to increase funding for Alzheimer's research at the NIH, and to invest in innovative treatments through the 21st Century Cures Act. I'm still fighting for patients and families struggling with Alzheimer's, and I know with the help of dedicated advocates like all of you, we can find new discoveries that improve the quality of life for those living with Alzheimer's. So thank you again for this award. I'm truly touched to have your support. Thank you so much, Senator Murray. We are honored to have you. And as you heard tonight, partners are a key part of us. This year, we honor one of our most important ones, AARP. AARP was one of our early supporters of the Brain Health Partnership, collaborating with us to promote optimal brain health across the lifespan. They also helped underwrite our tribute wall this evening. Please join me in congratulating AARP the 2020 Corporate Champion, and welcoming Joanne Jenkins, AARP's CEO. Thank you for recognizing AARP with the Us Against Alzheimer's Corporate Champion Award. On behalf of all people living with or concerned about dementia, AARP is proud to stand with Us Against Alzheimer's as we work together to reduce risk of brain health, improve dementia care, and support innovations for a cure. It's a special pleasure to join you in honoring the fierce advocacy of Trish Radenberg, 
She personally understood the challenges dementia presents. She saw her own mother struggle with it and felt the impact on the whole family as they helped to take care of her. Many of us participating in this event and many more AARP members across the country have our own personal stories as well. These stories help us all to understand that this is an epic struggle for the health and well-being for all families, and they fuel our passion and advocacy to make life better for others. AARP is highly focused on reducing risk for cognitive decline and empowering people with or at risk of cognitive decline to choose how they live as they age. That's why we're excited to partner with Us Against Alzheimer's in a tribute wall so we can help share these special personal stories and honor all those engaged in the struggle, especially those most vulnerable to the risk of brain health, those who are aging, African Americans, Hispanics, and women. And through our StayingSharp.org website, the Global Council on Brain Health, the Women's Brain Trust, chaired by First Lady Laura Bush, and the Be Brain Powerful campaign, we are committed to developing effective solutions. Thank you again for this honor. We look forward to continuing our work with you to help people stay sharp, live well with dementia, and one day to stop it in its tracks. Uh, as you can see from the prior videos, we partnering not only with members of the Senate and of course the House, uh, but also companies like Acadia, and you'll hear uh, more in a few minutes as well as NGOs on governmental organizations such as AARP, and of course, great political leaders uh, as uh, you've seen with Laura Bush. So if any of this inspires you and in our work in generating the collective power of these important voices, we urge you text to give. Information is gonna be on your screen. So we encourage you to contribute. One of the most important aspects of our work is including underrepresented voices in this fight. Uh, by 2030, nearly 40% of all Americans living with Alzheimer's will be black or Latino. Remember that, 2030, that's 10 years, 40% of the people living with Alzheimer's in this country will be black or Latino. So addressing inequities in brain health is vital for families, communities, and the nation, and indeed our mission to assure that therapeutics, the means of prevention and effective treatment, reach all Americans of all communities. I am grateful to our board members, Dr. David, David Satcher, uh, formerly of the CDC and uh, a Surgeon General of the United States, and Dr. William Vega, one of the nation's most prominent uh, Latino, uh, Latin, Latino, that's correct, a Latino uh, researchers for their work on this effort which you'll hear more about now from them. The population of people living with Alzheimer's and related dementias in the U.S. is changing and becoming more diverse. But our nation's healthcare and research systems often fail communities of color, poor people, and women. When it comes to clinical trial diversity and sex-based research, America's research system falls woefully short of full inclusion. Our research doesn't include enough people from diverse racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic backgrounds, so we can't ensure breakthroughs will work for all Americans. Compounding this national tragedy is that Alzheimer's and related dementias have a disproportionate effect on communities of color and women. Despite this increased risk, our healthcare system limits equal access to promising treatments, health services, and interventions essential to stopping Alzheimer's and addressing key risk factors. Black Americans and Latinos are less likely to receive a timely diagnosis or participate in Alzheimer's research. Black Americans and Latinos in the counties with the highest prevalence of Alzheimer's also experience greater levels of social inequity and the high costs of Alzheimer's care and treatment are limiting economic opportunities for Black and Latino families. The trends are clear and alarming. By 2030, nearly 40% of all Americans living with Alzheimer's will be African American or Latino, unless something is done. Our nation must recognize the role that systemic racism has played in creating this grim reality for families confronting Alzheimer's if we are to address these health disparities at their root. 
Without action, under-resourced communities will remain at a disadvantage when it comes to advances in brain health. As a result, societal inequities will continue to grow. Our nation's best-in-class healthcare system and research system will continue to shortchange millions of black and brown families, and they will continue to be left behind. This cannot stand. Our government leaders, the nation's healthcare system, and healthcare industry partners must set and be held to goals for advancing health equity and research recruitment, access to healthcare services, and improvements in quality care. If these steps are taken, our nation can make significant progress in delivering on the promise of brain health for all communities. This important work that we do is made possible not just by your support, which we seek, but the support we receive as well from our partner organizations. They're not just sponsors to us, they are uh, partners in the effort to find new therapies uh, to stop this disease. They are invested in the work as we are, and they individually within these companies are invested at a personal level with the same intensity that we are as well. I'd now like to introduce two more of them to you now as I continue my berry drink. Uh, ASI has been deeply engaged in our early intervention work this year, also a supporter of our COVID research. Otsuka has been a longstanding partner in our Women's Leadership Council and a key part of the Global CEO Initiative, our corporate roundtable. Hello, I'm Ivan Cheung, Chairman of ASI Inc. And we are honored to join all of you virtually to support the 2020 Trish Fredenberg Gala, as well as celebrate such a significant milestone of us against Alzheimer's 10th anniversary. On behalf of ASI in the US and around the world, we thank you for your outstanding achievements over these 10 years in helping to improve the lives of those impacted by Alzheimer's and stand as a committed partner in our future efforts to conquer Alzheimer's and related dementias. Enjoy your evening. First of all, congratulations to everyone at Us Against Alzheimer's on your 10 year milestone. Over the past decade, you've cemented your reputation as an unmatched force. You have galvanized, inspired, and humbled us as we join you in the fight against Alzheimer's. I'm proud to represent Otsuka America Pharmaceutical Incorporated here today. Our purpose, defy limitations so that others can too, compels us to consistently find ways to improve the well being of patients families, and healthcare providers impacted by mental illness. Otsuka is one of the only pharmaceutical companies that continues to invest in developing pharmaceuticals, digital medicine, and digital therapeutics for the treatment of mental illnesses. We pride ourselves on taking on the hardest challenges in health. I'm sure everyone here can agree that in Alzheimer's we face a particularly tough foe. But as we live and adapt to life in 2020, we are all reminded that we should never, ever give up. I'm honored to be joined by everyone here today who is working against the odds to beat Alzheimer's. And congratulations to everyone who is being honored here tonight with awards for their service. I also want to thank Us Against Alzheimer's for bringing specific attention to the unique needs of women. As a member of the Women's Leadership Council, I can share firsthand that the work of this council is both urgently needed and exceptionally executed. Thank you all for your work and dedication, and I look forward to seeing what we can all accomplish together. Thank you so much, Mary. It would be wrong to have this evening without thinking about the people living with this disease as part of the us. Every day, we work alongside those living with the disease, their families, and caregivers. And it is our honor, we are humbled, to introduce a few of them tonight. My mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in April of 2016. 
I've come to learn that receiving an accurate and timely diagnosis is hard for Latino families. Despite being one and a half times more likely to get Alzheimer's disease, Latinos are less likely than whites to receive an Alzheimer's diagnosis due to low levels of awareness of symptoms, limited access to health care. very first time I went with my mom to the doctor, you know, we were supposed to get the diagnosis, if you will. And from the moment we walked in, that, the guy with the neurologist was as disrespectful <laughs> as any person I've ever been with. And I was like, you've been coming to this guy forever. I, he talked down to her, he was condescending, he was rude. And then he's, um, he wanted my mom to take, um, you know, one of the drugs and she did not want to do it. And, and he said, that's what's wrong with you people. You don't ever want to, you know, do what we recommend. You people. And so that, yeah, that was the end for me. We got, I, I got my mom's purse and we stood up and that was the end of that visit. <laughs> when we start asking questions like this, um, I have to write notes because I can't, I can't answer unless I, I write notes. So the stress comes on like a fog and sometimes it comes in heavy and sometimes you see it drift and I'm drifting out to Pluto again. And, and uh, the rage is out of control at times and it's scaring my wife and kids and they, they don't know how to deal with it so I leave the house and um, and then sometimes when I leave because I leave when I'm angry I've lived in this neighborhood for 37 years I don't know where the hell I am and that's not a good thing it's harder because you know the days all kind of mushed together um, I think for me it's I tr it's 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 trying not to do too much my brain gets really messed up uh, I, the best way i know how to describe it and i don't have alzheimer's so i don't know what alzheimer's feels like but other people with ftd seem to agree when i say my head feels full and then my language falls apart and then I get really out of sorts and really emotional I just kind of keep having to reset over and over again but every reset gets harder and I, I fought 10 years to keep her you know comfortable let let Alzheimer's take her to let something just come and take her overnight or in a week or two weeks, it, it would seriously devastate me. Aspect of, I think that's how she's gonna leave is obviously, either she's gonna choke with food, not breathing well, or she's gonna pass away in her sleep. Since I've been told that I have the mutation and I'm guaranteed to have it at the age of 65, I don't think about it. I don't think about the disease attacking me because I have faith that I'm in a clinical trial. I have faith that that trial is going to work. Somewhat ironically, people ask me, why are you still in the fight? You cared for your husband for 24 years and your mother at home. Knowing the disease would win no matter what you did, I believe advocacy saved my life. If you've seen the disease, up close, you're changed forever. And I think any advocate you meet will have a similar feeling. And now I can't stop because again, it's not about me. We need to win. We need to make a difference for other people. We don't want another family living living the Alzheimer's journey. It's unacceptable. Thank you, Yvonne, Loretta, Greg, Tracy, Daisy, and my dearest friend, Meryl Comer, for the courage of sharing your stories and your pain, and then turning that pain into action. These are the stories that is our motivation. 
and the reason we exist and the reason we are motivated to work as hard as we do with as many people as we do to cure this disease. Your support of our work makes this all possible. For those of you who don't know Meryl, my great friend, she's a journalist, author, activist, caregiver of her husband and her mother for more than 20 years. And she uh, it was and uh, one of Trish and my best friends, but she is now my best friend. And she's a co-founder of this organization. It's my honor to have her join us tonight, Meryl. Thank you, George. Hug, hug. Trish would say, all right, everybody, lighten up. I mean, joining us here at home brings back such wonderful and personal memories. For many of you out there, I mean, an invite was always a special treat. And if you heard laughter, Trish was always in the center. You know, she described her mother as a lioness, but with deference, Trish was our lioness. She loved the fight. She would go up on Capitol Hill, skewer members of Congress with her wit, be, never give up, and she couldn't wait for the call that came, it always came, that said, uh, okay, Trish, uh, I've given up, you've got my vote. That was Trish. And she always used her keen wit. Uh, she did a play about her mother called Surviving Grace uh, because she was a master at writing dialogue. For many of you, you'll remember that she was a comedy writer for uh, Family Ties and Designing Women. And she balanced the humor with the pain that families wrestle with as our loved ones slowly disappear into the darkness of Alzheimer's. Trish and George also celebrated her mother each year at our gala with the Bee Learner Award, presented to someone who bravely uses their voice or public platform to reduce stigma, bring public awareness to the circumstances of millions of Alzheimer's patients and their families. This year's honoree brings her star power, youth, awareness, empathy for why we fight and our hope for the future. It is my pleasure to announce that this year's Bee Learner Award goes to actress, singer, and advocate Mandy Moore. Let's take a look at how Mandy and the cast of This Is Us betray the storyline of Rebecca Pearson's Alzheimer's diagnosis on the NBC show viewed by over 6.4 million people weekly. You came back. I was getting worried. Of course I came back. That movie was three and a half hours long and then the line at the store was huge. I left you a bunch of messages. Oh, I turned off my cell phone for the movie. I must have forgotten to turn it back on. Sorry. Hi, green <laughs> Look at that. Hey. I'm really sorry, Mom. About last night, I was probably overreacting and, you know. I was halfway through the trailer of Cats when I couldn't remember what movie I went to go see. I think I need to see having some memory issues lately you know, forgetting my phone forgetting words small things little things but Randall noticed that something was off with me uh, around Thanksgiving and I went to have some tests done oh my god no, no, no. hold on nothing is certain but they did diagnose me with something called mild cognitive impairment which could eventually lead to dementia or Alzheimer's. Hey, what's going on? What's, what's going on with mom? Guys, what the hell's going on with mom? Right, Somebody say right, something. All right, all right, all right. It's, um, 
Mom is suffering from cognitive impairment. And it's too early to, to see how it's going to progress. But we'll know more once we get our MRI results back next week. <clears throat> Rand, are we talking about Alzheimer's here? Possibly. For millions of families, that's so real and moving of the uneasy journey so many adult children and spouses have been on. And now here to introduce Mandy and present her with this year's award is her longtime friend, former presidential candidate and mayor of South Bend, Indiana, Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg, and I'm sending warm greetings from South Bend, Indiana. I am honored to be joining you today, and I want to thank your outstanding founder, George Vradenberg, for extending the invitation to say a few words. Alzheimer's is such an exceptionally cruel disease. In addressing a major health challenge like Alzheimer's, with the right sense of urgency, requires partnerships, collaborations, bringing every single kind of stakeholder together. And that's exactly the kind of work Us Against Alzheimer's is doing. Not unlike the moon landing back in the 1960s, finding a cure for Alzheimer's should be a national project and should receive the public sector investment and financial support at a scale required to make sure we bring into reality what might once have been considered impossible. We also gotta finally fully recognize and support the critical and heroic work of caregivers across the country. Some as part of their chosen profession others because they are thrust by circumstances into the role of taking care of a loved one. Sometimes during my campaign for president, I noticed a disconnect between the issues the press would ask me about the most and what voters consistently wanted to talk about at nearly every town hall. And certainly one of those areas was about how so many unexpectedly found themselves in the position of taking care of an aging parent or spouse or someone suffering from Alzheimer's or dementia over years and sometimes decades. We've got to do more to support long-term caregivers and advocates, and overall to build a more equitable healthcare system in America. One of those very advocates, someone I'm thrilled to be introducing tonight, is my good friend and tonight's recipient of the Bee Learner Award, Mandy Moore. On and off the screen, Mandy is using her very public platform and visibility to help address the stigma surrounding brain health, she works to empower everyone, especially women, to take control of their health. And she is encouraging all of us to focus on early detection, the same way we try to do with things like heart disease. I know Mandy puts her heart and soul into every project she takes on, and we all benefit enormously from her tireless efforts to raise awareness and change the conversations about this vital dimension of our health and well-being. So thank you for all of the work that you do, and please welcome Mandy Moore. <laughs> Hi there, Mandy. Congratulations. I wish I could give it to you in person. <laughs> and we hope I your wish millions I were in person of too. <laughs> we hope your followers and our gala guests are lighting up Twitter and Instagram as we speak. Uh, Mandy, I know you have your own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, right? That was last I year. I do, yes. Okay. You've won two Screen Guild Actor Awards, that's important, nominated for the Golden <laughs> Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress. See, I've done my homework. I want to know what this award means to you, and does it validate your portrayal of Rebecca Pearson? Um, I am unbelievably honored and, and taken aback. This award means so much coming from um, Us Against Alzheimer's, an organization that I just hold in such high regard. Um, this, it's, it's remarkable. I mean, to be a 36-year-old woman portraying, um, you know, a woman who's a little advanced in her years, who's a mother and a grandmother, and has been on a, a you know, an exceptional journey on this, this particular television show. But now to be able to sort of find the space to delve into this, this story, this narrative that resonates with so many people, unfortunately, and fortunately, um, across the country is just an enormous honor. You know, it's very touching, Mandy, for so many of us, because fortunately, you don't have Alzheimer's in your family. 
So where do you draw your role models from for Rebecca's character, not only as she ages, but also her descent into Alzheimer's? Yeah, I mean, so much is owed to um, the writers. They are just exceptional on every level. And the way they sort of have plotted out this particular story is so um, accurate. I think accuracy is really important. Um, I know that when um, kind of delving into this particular storyline, um, there were neurologists conferred with. Um, there was actually neurologists on set with us when we shot like particular scenes. You know, just even to get it correct where, um, you know, how the doctor would conduct testing um, in terms of like early diagnosis, uh, where the family would sit to receive the news, how I would be completing the test. Um, I think it's always been important for us, and sort of the, the key for our show is really being able to handle complicated issues with poise and, and grace and um, being able to show sort of the full range of, of what, what human beings are going through. And although we've just seen, I think, a fraction of this journey with Rebecca and sort of her, her um, you know, delving into um, getting this diagnosis and, and how that's going to sort of affect her life as she goes on and moves forward. Um, it's, it's, it's going to be fascinating and heartbreaking and all of the things that we've all come to know from this, this insidious disease. Now, you know, we're a really tough audience because we live it and we know the nuances. So you have to really be good <laughs> at it. You had 7.9 million people watching your last episode <laughs> where you were in a hospital bed surrounded by your family. Now, that dynamic tension and that portrayal of how the children react, is it's a disease that impacts families, not just the individual. Yeah. And I think we've captured that. Uh, you've got a son, Kevin. He wants to give you the best of life for as long as you have it. And then you have Randall, and Randall really wants you to get into a clinical trial. He's doing the best. All these dynamic tensions that happen in a family. Did your fellow actors realize that the arc of your story would affect how their characters developed? <laughs> I think we're all pretty well versed on, you know, the the idea that like how interconnected all of our stories are. Um, so yes, I think in that regard they were they were aware that the repercussions, I guess, of what um, their characters were sort of expressing and going through was going to have ramifications for my character and her choices. I think that's also sort of the trick of our show is, um, you know, I think it's been important for us to want to destigmatize this conversation um, and the embarrassment, the shame, the guilt, the anger, the anxiety, all of the range of emotions I think that come along with a diagnosis, not just for, for the person who's been diagnosed, but obviously, like you just mentioned, for the family. Um, and being able to recognize that living in the now my character's choice of sort of this acute realization of no more next times, time is the most valuable resource that she has on her side, is, is what gives her this sense of inner peace and I think sort of sets her on this particular path. And her family kind of has no choice but to sort of heed her wishes in, in that regard. And I think, you know, we have the opportunity with millions of people that watch our show and you know, 30 some odd episodes, 30 some odd hours of television left over the next couple of years to sort of tell this story with accuracy um, and heart and compassion. Um, and I, 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 have, I have this idea that, you know, we're not going to sort of, although our show sort of jumps around in time, I think we're going to show in real time what happens to this family. You know, whether there's a a move forward with a clinical trial or not, um, you know, whether Rebecca's choices are sort of honored. Um, it, it will be interesting to sort of see how it unfolds, but I hope that there's um, resonance with people who've been in this position before they recognize themselves and the choices these characters are making in, in their own lives. 
How would you describe the dynamic between you and your fellow actors? Are you like a family? What's the energy? <laughs> <laughs> We're very much like a family. We've been doing it for, for five seasons now together and we love each other and we sort of have ridden this unbelievable wave together. Um, and we also, I think, are really good about giving each other space. Like, these are not easy topics that we deal with on our show. You know, whether it's addiction, now dementia, um, of race relations like i mean we just sort of cover the gambit of things um it's and and we're all human beings dealing with different things in our own lives to varying degrees and i think we're all very good about giving each other space and grace um to sort of get through the tougher moments i know for instance like last season a little bit of that scene that you um you sort of showed a clip of um when my character sort of finally admits to her child, to the one child who sort of recognized that something was off with his mother, and that was because he wasn't with her day to day. So, you know, going weeks or months at a time without seeing one another, it was maybe a little bit easier for him to pinpoint that something was off with mom. Um, that that scene was so heavy and emotional, just sort of as, as a human recognizing like the weight of what this woman is admitting to her child and admitting to herself. And I remember holding it back in the particular moment. And then when we were done shooting and they moved on to the next scene, I just erupted in emotion. I like got back to the confines of my little trailer and just let myself really feel everything because it's we're not immune to it. It, it definitely it, it affects it affects us as much as I think, you know, it affects people watching it at home. Well, we'd like to show you, Mandy, how much you're loved by your cast members. So what? why don't we take a look? Yes, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> So let me tell you all a little secret. This may be something that not everybody is familiar with, but I'm going to let it out. It's just going to be between us, okay? So keep it quiet. But I love Mandy Moore. I love everything about her. She's a fellow Aries, first of all. She's a brilliant singer. She's an incredible actor, but far and away, she is an extraordinary human being. And she's the kind of person that I am honored to call my friend. And Mandy Moore, congratulations on being this year's recipient of the B Learner Award. I couldn't think of a more worthy recipient. Uh, your performance as Rebecca Pearson from day one has been out of this world. And as you enter into this phase where she is dealing with dementia, um, progressing quite possibly towards Alzheimer's, the dedication, the nuance, the attention to detail that you pay um, is as always second to none. I hope that the folks who watch your performance can identify um, for better or for worse with what you are putting on screen. And I hope that the community of caretakers that are witnessing the Pearson family struggle with how best to care for you can also identify with those struggles. So keep doing what you're doing, mom. My mom who's eight years younger than me because uh, it's always a joy to act with you uh, and even greater joy to call you my friend. I love you, congratulations. Hi everybody, it's uh, Dan Fogelman here from This Is Us. Um, I just wanted to congratulate you, Mandy, on being presented with the Be Learner Award here tonight. Um, Alzheimer's is something that has been a very important part of our show, obviously, for many seasons. And it's something that has touched our writer's room and our entire um, show. And so when you go about attacking something so important on national television, um, you really want to get it right. And um, luckily for me and for us, um, we had the actress to do just that who's doing just that. Um, Mandy has poured herself into this portrayal. Um, she studies, she works, she speaks with people. Um, I'm very proud of her and proud of what um, she's doing on the show. But most importantly, um, I just want to send a lot of love to all the patients and caregivers who may be joining tonight. Um, thank you for recognizing Mandy and in doing so recognizing our show. And um, 
Um, I'm sending a lot of love, and uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Thank you. Bye. Hi, I am Chrissy Metz. I play Kate Pearson on NBC's This Is Us. I am so pleased to be here to say a huge congratulations to my friend Mandy on receiving the Bee Learner Award tonight. It is so wonderful to know that our show is helping to raise awareness for Alzheimer's and I applaud us against Alzheimer's on 10 years of doing this important work. The experience of helping to portray Rebecca's storyline and the journey that the Pearson family has been on is so deeply meaningful to all of us at the show. It is our goal to share the story that so many American families are enduring, especially women like Kate's character who are dealing with small children and aging parents all at the same time. That is why I am so glad Mandy has joined the Be Brain Powerful campaign as an ambassador and is helping to raise awareness about the importance of women's brain health. It has been such a joy to work with you these last years, Mandy. Congrats on the award tonight. And to those of you watching, I hope you will join us in the conversation and the work to end Alzheimer's. Congratulations, Mandy. So proud of you. I love you. Are you feeling the love? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so feeling the love. I'm so touched right now. <laughs> what a sweet surprise. Mandy, you're young, you're beautiful, talented. What's the takeaway from the role for you personally? Has it changed the way you look at life? Yeah, in every way imaginable. It makes me want to sink into every single moment that I'm lucky enough to be here. It makes me want to squeeze my loved ones tighter. It makes me want to have deeper conversations with my loved ones and my friends. I, I, I just feel so exceedingly lucky to be a part of a, a creative endeavor that engenders so much conversation around so many important topics that makes people feel more connected, that sort of forces us all to hold up a mirror to our own lives and the choices that we've made. And then most importantly, what we're talking about here this evening, being a part of this conversation of, of you know, getting the word out about Alzheimer's and continuing the conversation. I mean, not to get too deep into it, but I feel like when I first found out that this was going to be a part of, of this character's journey that I've been living with for four years um, and, and recognizing the statistics of, you know, almost six million people in this country living with Alzheimer's, two thirds of, of them being women, two thirds of the caregivers being women, that women in their 60s are twice as likely to develop Alzheimer's than breast cancer. I mean, these statistics were so staggering. I I just couldn't imagine not being on a rooftop with a bullhorn shouting to everybody, like, why is, why is the entire world talking about this? And I understand that we are. I understand there's there's a lot to sort of address, but I'm, I'm so unendingly honored to be a part of something that can you know, continue this conversation um, and, and be able to reach as many people as we do with the show and for hopefully for many people to, again, to recognize themselves in, in this character and this family's uh, journey. We're thrilled to have you as part of the family, of our family, of us. <laughs> and yes. uh, we have another surprise with, for you, but you're just going to have to wait a little bit. So while we get ready, please join me in recognizing Biogen, one of our earliest supporters and believers in a campaign where you're our ambassador, our Be Brain Powerful campaign. Ciao, my name is Ivana Rubino and I am the Vice President of US and Global Medical Affairs for Alzheimer's Disease at Biogen. I have spent all my career working in Alzheimer's disease research. And what drives me in my work is really the sense of community that such an important mission has created and keeps fostering. In fact, in the US, one in 10 people age 65 or over have Alzheimer's disease, which makes Alzheimer's disease the sixth leading cause of mortality in this country. We know this disease is awful. It robs us from memories and time with our families, but it also carries an incredible financial burden for patients, caregivers, and societies. With approximately $500 billion spent in the US to manage patients with Alzheimer's. 
I'm really passionate about Tasse Against Alzheimer's mission, and I truly believe it takes all of us to face and address this major health challenge. 2020 is an year like no others, with so many unprecedented challenges. And this is why it's so important for us to keep Alzheimer's in the national spotlight and to not lose focus on our mission of improving the lives of the people living with this devastating disease. I want to congratulate us against Alzheimer's on 10 years of carrying out their important work to help this community. And I also want to congratulate tonight's distinguished honorees. You all play such an important role in increasing awareness, education, and funding for this disease. Lastly, I want to invite you all to join us in the fight to end Alzheimer's disease. None of us can do this alone. Thank you. Mandy, we're back. And I'm joined by George. Now, George obviously will not be running for office because he has a drink in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working on my berry cocktail. <laughs> Mandy, thank you again for being with us tonight. A few people you know very well wanted to celebrate with you. Please join me in welcoming live Kritzi Metz, who plays Kate Pearson on This Is Us, and George's daughter, Alyssa Ar Trish used to call her mini me. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Chrissy? Mini. I'm in And I just want to be and congratulate you. You're such a teacher of mine, bringing so much to the class. So I just want to be an all of you. It means so much. Thank you, Chrissy. <laughs> And, and to the lady who brought us all together, Alyssa. <laughs> well, I love being a matchmaker. It's the Jewish blood in me. You can't resist. <laughs> but I just can't thank you enough for being part of this cause and being an incredible advocate on the behalf of Alzheimer's. You are someone who just gives your heart to everything you do. And I admire you and your work ethic, your kindness, your generosity. Again, in everything you touch, it just turns to pure joy. And my mother and I used to watch This Is Us together every night. Every up, I mean, every night it was on. I would like to watch it every night, but every <laughs> night it was on. And she is here with us. I feel her, and she's watching you and thrilled to have you in the trenches. And I, uh, I love you. So thank you again. This isn't quite the berry cocktail, maybe not as good brain healthy, but it will do. <laughs> It'll work. But so this is, I love you this, too, This Alyssa. is the woman I'm fighting for right there, the one, the blonde, uh, the blonde uh, with the white wine. <laughs> <laughs> and we're fighting for your generation, Mandy. For, and it, we, yeah. This is really about a legacy for women of my generation, making sure that you don't have to face what we've been through. So thank you so much uh, for being our ambassador. Uh, thank your cast for doing what they do and bringing 7.9 million people to begin to understand this disease. Uh, Jill? <laughs> it has been an amazing evening. And I, uh, I could not end the evening without Tossing it back to you, Mandy, to see if you want to say anything to your special guests before we close. Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm just so touched by this whole evening and to be a part of this and to be a part of, of the story of Us Against Alzheimer's and the, along with Chrissy and our entire cast, like being able to tell this story for the next few years and hopefully the, the impact will be immeasurable. Um, but thank you. I can't wait to see all of the work that we continue to do together and the advocacy and hopefully affect some real change in, in this particular space. Well, listen, to you and to Alyssa, who brought us together, I mean, we are a small organization, and you all have a big megaphone. So thank you for being part of a show that uses that megaphone. There's still time to support us. We've raised, I don't know how much, but I think a great amount of money tonight. Oh, we have actually 
hit our goal. We have raised $100,000. That is unbelievable. It's coming in in real time. Wow. Um, on top of what we raised before tonight, oh my gosh, I'm so humbled um, as I am every year. Uh, so really, thank but you. But Jill, Jill, Jill share the big ready. amount before tonight. Share that number. It's worth the big amount. A total of seven hundred thousand. Total for the of seven hundred thousand for your evening, and we couldn't have done it without all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Meryl, George, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. So thank you, Meryl. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you, Alyssa. I love you, uh, uh, particularly the last one. Uh, you you tr truly made this a, a gala to remember. Thank you all who joined us from your home to make this a special evening. Though we aren't together, we can feel your love, your energy, the friendship, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, your support. I hope you stay connected with us. Join us in this fight. Thank you and good night. Good night. Good night, good night everyone. <laughs>